Good evening. Good evening. On behalf of Chancellor Collins, welcome to UMass Chan Medical School. Uh, if able, can we please stand for the national anthem? Let's welcome Michelle Oliveri, a GAP student. What so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave. Can we please sit? Thank you, Michelle. That was so amazing. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Dr. Akosituya, and I have had the honor of serving as the director of the Graduate Entry Pathway Program. Tonight, I will be the host for the Tan Chen Fein Graduate School of Nursing painting ceremony. First, I would like to offer a very warm welcome to Chancellor Collins, uh, Provost Fraud, Dean Vitello, faculty, distinguished guests, family, friends, and last, but certainly not the least, members of the GAP class of 2022. <laughs> it is so wonderful to have the opportunity to be here with all of you tonight to celebrate this time honored nursing school tradition. In conventional nursing programs, the pinning ceremony signifies the end of nursing coursework and clinical, and the entry of the new class of registered nurses into the healthcare workforce. But our students' academic pursuits do not end tonight. As they continue on to graduate level studies in nursing, the pinning ceremony marks just the first of many milestones along their professional journey. It is said that the GAP program or the GAP year is very transformative for students. We are proud to have witnessed the transformation of this group. Students came to us with backgrounds in marketing, ballet, undergraduate studies, uh, st uh, students, teachers, having worked in community and public health settings and in clinical research. It's been an honor to watch your development into compassionate caregivers who staunchly uphold our mission to maintain respect and human dignity for all of those in our care. Students, I am very confident of your readiness to begin your professional practice and make a significant impact. May you always remember to listen in order to learn, to practice self-reflection, to engage in dialogue, even when it might be very uncomfortable, and to hold yourself and others accountable to take action when you see wrongdoing. 
On behalf of all the GIF faculty, congratulations. It has been a pleasure to work with you, to learn from you, and tonight to welcome you as our newest colleagues. Wear your pins with pride. I will conclude with a quote by the German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche. What did Nietzsche say? <laughs> Nietzsche <laughs> said, and those who were seen dancing were thought to be insane by those who could not hear the music. So in your practice, in your encounter with students, see the unusual in the usual. See the extraordinary in the ordinary and see the strange in the familiar. Once again, congratulations and thank you. At this point, I would like to uh, invite Dr. John Vitello, Dean of the Tanchin Fein Graduate School of Nursing, to share her opening remarks. Thank you, Akwasi. Well, welcome. Um, family members, um, you are the ones who have really endured along with these students, so, uh, and we're very proud of them. So I always reflect on what I want to say because this is such an important time for you. It's a milestone in your careers. So I, I started to reflect on what I wanted to say. So as nurses, we are most privileged to be allowed into the most intimate periods of our patients' lives when they are most vulnerable. I view this nurse-patient relationship as having a covenant with that patient because of the intimacy and spirituality of that connection. This covenant is a promise or a pledge based on high professional standards to bring patients to wholeness, healing, or a dignified death. For me, nursing is a vocation and a means to live out our calling to exhibit compassion, convey loving kindness, and understanding of the lived experiences of patients. While a covenant is an agreement we enter into every time we care for a patient. I truly believe that the covenant with patients is to really get to know the clinical and personal information of our patients. Equally important is to have our patients feel known by us, as it is a privilege to be allowed special access to their lives. There are times when a patient may share their stories that they never were able to share with others. When I was a nurse, way back when, for only three years, um, that was 43 years ago, in a VA cardiac surgical ICU, many veterans would share their horrors of fighting in World War II or, Viet or Vietnam their vulnerability and willingness to share their intimate details surfaced, especially around the holidays of Thanksgiving, Christmas, or New Year's. Remember back 43 years ago, I know some of you are not even old enough to remember that, um, cardiac surgical patients were with us for almost two weeks. So I had the pleasure of really getting to know them, which I think we miss out on so often in nursing these days. I remember several patients who survived their experience during the Normandy invasion and the heart-wrenching stories they shared that made a lasting impression for me as a nurse. That was 43 years ago, but those experiences of knowing our patients are everlasting. As I just visited Normandy in France this past July, and stood at Omaha Beach. Those memories came rushing back and actually brought tears to my eyes. I have cherished the opportunity to know the special stories of patients and to be allowed into their lives 
In turn, these narratives have shaped the nurse that I am today. So my wish for you is to take seriously this covenant with your patients as they will share their lived experience and instill in you many important values that will shape the nurse you will become. Welcome colleagues to this honored and privileged profession. Thank you. So it is now my distinct privilege and honor to introduce to you Dr. Terence Flott, who's our Dean, Provost, and Executive Deputy Chancellor of UMass Chan Medical School. Thank you, Joan. Uh, good evening, and uh, let me add my congratulations to you, most especially uh, the graduate entry pathways students receiving your pins this evening. Uh, I want to also add my congratulations to your family and friends who are here. We're so pleased that we can be together. This is a very boisterous group, and being in person is, is so special for us. I also want to congratulate the faculty uh, of the uh, Tian Ching Fen Graduate School of Nursing uh, and our deans led by Dean Joan Vitello. Uh, it, this is a true success uh, for everyone who is engaged with you. As Joan mentioned, the nursing pin is a long-held tradition and it has a number of important meanings associated with, with it, all of which reflect the special vocation uh, and the profession of nursing. I have a deep respect for all nurses, but must note that you, the nurses of the GAP program, are particularly in exceptional in that you're making your professional commitment to the profession of nursing after having completed at least one other college degree, in some cases several. As such, you're making a very mature and informed choice as adults to pursue the nursing profession. You have decided to pursue a profession that at its core is about serving others. The professional standards of nursing demand a deep commitment to focus on the welfare of your patients and their families. As you continue on your path in the GAP program to become advanced practice nurses in the DNP, you will continue to develop your knowledge and skills. Nonetheless, this pinning ceremony is a crucial transition. From this point on, as professional nurses, you've changed your role. In our educational programs here at UMass Chan in the health sciences, we begin with a student-centered curriculum. Then we transition to the patient-centered care environment. This, this ceremony marks the, marks the tipping point in that transition for you. It is a profound transition but also a joyous one. Now, uh, you guys know, I think, that I'm a physician. Uh, I will have to tell you I have learned some of the most important lessons I've learned about patients uh, from nurses, from my nursing colleagues. We have the great uh, privilege here to have physicians and nurses trained in the same academic institution. When I reflect on things I've learned uh, from nurses, one thing that stands out, I have to say, is the gift that nurses give to their patients, the most important gift, which is the gift of their time, uh, which I think is something that doc Dr. Fatello was alluding to when she talked about the time that she's had to spend with her patients uh, over the years. Enough time to get to know them as people, enough time to feel that they are known as people. Uh, I reflect on some of the most important impressions nurses have made on my family and myself as patients, as family members. Uh, spending time during very difficult life transitions uh, or at the end of life. Now, I don't wanna take any more of your time away from your celebration, so I will just end with my most heartfelt best wishes for all of you in your nursing careers as you continue your education and professional development. Um, I think we are 
very fortunate to have all of you in this profession, and we look forward to having you uh, develop in the coming years as our advanced practice nurses going for your DNP. So thank you very much, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your evening. And now I have the great privilege to introduce uh, Chancellor Michael Collins, who is the leader uh, of the, the UMass Chan Medical School. Michael Collins. Well, good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome all of you to UMass Chan Medical School. Well, we're delighted that you can join us this evening. Um, I bring you greetings from the faculty of all three schools. Let me thank the provost and Provost Slot. Um, we've had a partnership now for 16 years here at the medical school. We're clearly on our third or fourth half-life, and, and uh, uh, it's very unusual in American medicine that someone can have these jobs for this long. And we love every minute of being here. It's been a privilege for us to lead this institution. Let me thank the dean, who has now, uh, in her seventh year here, had such enormous responsibility, and, and we're delighted um, to be colleagues with Joan. And to the members of the faculty, particularly the faculty of the Tan Ching Fen Graduate School of Nursing. I thank you very much for your stewardship of um, these learners uh, during their time here with us. Um, for our families and friends, welcome to campus. If you haven't been here before, I hope you're seeing how beautiful a place it is that we have the great privilege of coming to work every day. And uh, for those of you who are from Massachusetts, I hope you recognize the great gift of this public institution of higher education. Um, I'm supposed to be giving a welcome. Uh, this is Convocation Week. Um, it's the beginning of a long week of ceremonies, and I give my big speech on Thursday. And trust you, uh, trust me, that speech will be Thursday and not tonight. <laughs> uh, I want you to remember what I said tonight. I want all of you to remember what I said. So if you can remember three words, it will be simple. We need you. I was struck by the article in yesterday's Globe about how difficult it is to be a nurse today. Boy, do we need you. Having now been in medicine and had colleagues in nursing for over 40 years, it is so clear in my mind the important role that nurses play uh, in the healthcare profession. All of us find it, you know, it's necessary for all of us to. Um, to have a certain amount of intellect, to have a certain amount of uh, determination. But it is that healing touch which you bring to the bedside, which is so important. And when I look at the accomplishments of those of you who are in your class, PhDs and an MD and uh, uh, graduates from great institutions, including the University of Massachusetts, uh, our Amherst and Dartmouth campuses, and the College of the Holy Cross, where I went to, so I just throw that in. Um, it is so impressive, the intellect that you bring. But we need you. We need you now more than ever before, because so many nurses have decided that they can't continue in the profession. And we're going to need your energy, enthusiasm, commitment to caring, and intellect in today's world more than ever before. And I want you to know, and I'll say this to you when you walk across the, gate, the stage to get your diploma, and I want your families to hear this, we will forever take great pride in calling you one of our own because we need you. 
welcome all. It's a wonderful ceremony. Um, there's way more than to, to a police badge or a, or a name tag. Um, this is a pin which represents a profession. A profession different from a vocation because a profession has an oath. And tonight you will profess one. And we welcome you as colleagues because we need you. Thank you. Thank you, Chancellor Collins. As you know, I'm uh, a graduate of the UMass Chan Medical School, did my BS and to PhD here. So this shows how amazing UMass Chan is. I always say at UMass Chan, you get quality education for a fraction of the cost. <laughs> and it's very obvious. Uh, I would like to take a moment to uh, recognize the incredible faculty of the Graduate Entry Pathway Program. It is a privilege to work with you, and I could not be more appreciative of your hard work over the course of the year. So I will introduce to you our amazing GIP faculty. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Rita Amoa. <laughs> Dr. Mary Fisher wasn't able to be with us today, but she's online. So Dr. Mary Fisher. <laughs> Professor Carol Jeffery. <laughs> Professor Beth Keating. <laughs> Dr. Omanad Cole. And your one and only, Dr. Rose Kronzia Semi. <laughs> uh, Professor Tina Lorcan Dodd, she's not here. <laughs> Dr. Thin Malithasta. <laughs> and of course, Dr. Jessica Pagano Ferry. I would like to also uh, take this moment to also uh, appreciate our uh, nursing staff. They have been so amazing, and uh, they are uh, our dedicated nursing staff, uh, Diane Quinn, <laughs> Anne Redden, uh, Sue Colette. Daniel Blau, <laughs> and also Meg Babosa. <laughs> I would like to acknowledge two GEP faculty members who have also retired this past July, and they are uh, Professor Karen Jeffarian and Professor Ke Beth Kitten. <laughs> you will be greatly missed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good luck in your future adventures. Uh, tonight, we would also like to thank our adjunct faculty and our preceptors uh, who graciously give of their time and share their expertise with our students throughout the year. Uh, their names are listed in the evening's program. Thank you from all of us at the GSN for your contribution to the success of these students. I would now call Dr. Rose Kronzia Semi to the podium to start the award portion of the program. Hi. I think. Okay, better. So um, the Outstanding Clinical Partner Award is presented each year to clinical 
preceptor or healthcare organization who has partnered with Tan Chin Feng Graduate School of Nursing to host our students during the gap year. So we are proud to present the Outstanding Clinical Partner Award to Summit. They're not coming, but I'm going to read something. <laughs> okay. Um, so Summit, they graciously accepted extra learners and adjusted clinical rotation schedules and supported our students. You all know when COVID hit, we have all these um, hardship, but they were willing to do that for us. Summit ensured excellent communication between the site and the DGAP program. Summit, I mean, they all provided our students with incredible and valuable experiences. Our students felt as though they were part of the team and got deep understanding of the nursing role. The student expressed that they got more than just a clinical experience. And with that, we are deeply appreciative of your contribution to the clinical experience of our students. So we are very grateful and thank you for your partnership and congratulations for this wonderful award to Summit. So I'll call Dr. Akwesi Dua back to the podium. Thank you, Dr. Rose Kronzia. The Outstanding Preceptor Award will be presented each year to a clinical preceptor who has partnered with Tan Chan Fin Graduate School of Nursing to host a student during the gap year. The GAP Outstanding Preceptor Award is presented to Tracy Haycock. Uh, unfortunately, Tracy wouldn't, wasn't able to come here tonight, uh, but she's watching us. <laughs> Tracy Haycock is a professional nurse at Newton Wesley uh, Hospital. She has a progressive clinical career spanning 14 years in the USA, or also a previous RN in the UK as a mental health nurse and also as a nurse leader. Tracy is a focused clinical innovation and nurse leader with outstanding ability to innovate and adapt to meet the ever-changing and demanding nature of nursing. She has extensive knowledge and understanding in mental health, medical, surgical, telemetry, and step-down nursing. Tracy is a passionate clinical mentor to student nurses and new nurse graduates. She has a successful track record in both ambulatory and inpatient settings. Tracy is also the de facto leader of her peers on the unit, uh, the first point of contact for other RNs seeking advice. Despite all this, Tracy welcomed the opportunity to preceptor and mentor one of our GAPS students. The student described Tracy in the following way. Tracy has been an incredible wealth of knowledge surrounding cardiac, telemetry, and med stage nursing. She is an exemplar and a nurse advocate, teaching me the fine needs of interprofessional communication and critical thinking skills. I cannot say enough about her school as an educator and mentor. Thank you Tra for placing me with Tracy, as this preceptorship has been a pivotal experience in my nursing, in my learning. My wish is that more students are privy to experience Tracy's school. As such, I am wondering how, my, how I might go about advocating for Tracy to become a clinical instructor with UMass GSN. <laughs> At this time, uh, we will move uh, to the academic awards uh, portion of the program to uh, recognize the achievements of our students. The GAP faculty has identified several outstanding students whose performance has distinguished them over the past year. I would like to call Dr. Rita Amwa to the podium. Congratulations, colleagues. So, 
this award really, really gladdens my heart. And I just want to go in by saying that the Academic Excellence Award is presented to a student who demonstrates superior academic performance. And this is what the faculty says about this person. The award is presented to Joseph Tulip. Faculty, faculty um, describe Joseph as someone who exhibits intellectual humility, an essential precursor of learning acquisition. Not only did he recognize and own his intellectual limitations in the nursing discipline, but also sought deeper understanding of content taught. This characteristic was evident in his participation in class discussion forums and um, his engagement in clinical experiences, both in acute and community settings. Joe took the time to recognize the requirements of course assignment. He consistently provided thoughtful and well-researched content. Congratulations, Joe. I would like to call Dr. Thin Maletesta to the podium. <laughs> Hi, good evening. Um, it's my honor to present the Clinical Excellence Award. This award is presented to a student who embodies these characteristics, engaged, eager, self-reflective, motivated, reliable, authentic. This year's award is presented to Dominica Boucher. <laughs> These characteristics are only a few words to, to describe Dominica. From the first day of her preceptorship, her preceptor recognized that she needed to be challenged in her patient experiences. She was able to take on a full nurse's load from the beginning and eager to learn more. Even with her previous experience in healthcare, she was humble and fully immersed herself in becoming a nurse. From the remarks of other nurses on the floor, she was viewed as very bright and able to take it all in. She has a calm demeanor and has mastered the art of, communi of communicating effectively and compassionately with her patients. She spent her busy clinical days working with precision and effectiveness, but with an upbeat attitude. She lent a hand to her peers in her clinical groups and to nurses and ancillary staff. Congratulations. <laughs> At this point, I will call Professor Kit Beaton to the podium. Beth Keating, sorry. <laughs> I miss you all. Congratulations, my colleagues. So, 
The Spirit of Nursing Award is presented annually to the student who embodies key nursing attributes. These attributes include providing nursing care that is evidence-based and compassionate, promoting patient safety, comfort, and dignity, demonstrating grace and composure in times of many challenges and pressures, and finding purpose and joy in one's practice of nursing. This year, it is our pleasure to present the Spirit of Nursing Award to Amanda Ford. Amanda identified early in her nursing journey her goal of utilizing her background in community health with her evolving nursing practice skills to provide holistic, person-centered care to a diverse population, most notably to those individuals who may be disadvantaged or marginalized as a result of their environment. She sees health education as a key element in providing this care. Throughout this gap year, Amanda has embraced each of her clinical experiences. Speaking of her learning from each of these experiences, and recognizing the importance of effective communication and building relationships with patients. She recognizes the role of nursing as a core part of the interprofessional care team and sees advocating for her patients as part of this role. During her spring rotation, Amanda made strong connections with patients living with diabetes who were receiving care in the adult and pediatric diabetes clinic at UMass Memorial. This included adolescents as well as women with gestational diabetes. Amanda reflected on the need for care providers to champion for their patients and to provide personalized health education. During her summer internship at Winchester Hospital, Amanda fully engaged herself in this inpatient clinical experience and her learning without a complaint regarding her long days and commute. She confided in to, me, uh, to me her 14 hour days some days. And the motherly instinct was to worry about you driving. Uh, Amanda has grown her professional, professional nursing practice, which includes the concepts and experiences as outlined above, despite a number of personal challenges over the past year. She is resilient and will provide a safe and caring environment for all of her future patients. Congratulations, Amanda. <laughs> The Community Engagement Award is presented to a student who exhibit a strong commitment to community service. This year's award goes to Monica Wyant. <laughs> Despite the challenges of uh, in time, constraints of the GAP program, uh, Monica demonstrated her commitment to serving the Worcester community through her participation in the Urban Health College, an interdisciplinary program for health professional students to gain experience working with underserved populations. One of the initiatives in which Monica was involved was the podiatry clinic at ACE Project Worcester, where she not only provided food care, but also assisted with outreach to the homeless community and help attendees navigate through the services offered at the clinic. This coming year, she will be a student leader at the podiatry clinic. She has also participated at events such as vaccine clinics at local homeless shelters and a syringe exchange program. According to Monica, her engagement in the program has contributed to her professional development, helping her to become a better nurse. It is also important to note, to note <laughs> that Monica was the first Tan Chen Fein nursing student to participate in the Urban Health Scholars Program. She is indeed a trailblazer, paving the way for future nursing students to have a role in serving the underserved 
in the Worcester community. Congratulations, Monica. I would like to call Dr. Jess Pagano Therin to the podium. Good evening, everyone. Finally, I will present the DAISY Award for an Extraordinary Nursing Student. And I want to give you a little history on the DAISY Award. The DAISY Foundation was established in 1999 by members of the family of Patrick Barnes, who was a young man who died of complications from an autoimmune disease called ITP. To honor Patrick's memory, they conceptualized the DAISY Foundation, which is an acronym for Diseases Attacking the Immune System. As Patrick's family brainstormed what the Daisy Foundation would do, they kept coming back to the one positive thing that they held on to during Pat's illness, and that was the extraordinary care that he and they received from Pat's nurses. They were impressed by the clinical care that nurses provided and overwhelmed by their compassion. The Daisy Award for Extraordinary Nursing Students honors a student nurse who exemplifies the extraordinary and compassionate delivery of clinical care and goes above and beyond to make patients and their families' experiences in healthcare better. It's intended to remind students that even on your toughest days in nursing school, why it is that you chose to become a nurse. This year's 2022 DAISY Award for an Extraordinary Nursing Student is awarded to Robin Young. Robin, would you hold that up for, the, for everyone to see? Um, the foundation would like you to have this sculpture as a symbol of, of recognition today. This uh, piece is called a healer's touch. Each piece that's given to a Daisy Award winner is hand carved by artists in the Shona tribe in Zimbabwe. The economy and politics uh, in Zimbabwe have been in turmoil for many decades and the artists are able to support many members of their community by doing this work. The DAISY Foundation chose this design because it sensitively depicts the unique relationship that you sh nurses have with patients and also because the Shona people hold their healers in a position of great importance within the community. They feel about their traditional healers the way that the DAISY Foundation feels about nurses. They're treasures to their community. With that, congratula congratulations, Robin. So next, I'd like to invite Sarang Raj and Janice Batista to share with you the origins and significance of the nursing pin. Good evening. We're going to present a little bit of a history on the pin. The nursing pin has a long history, dating back to the Crusades of the 12th century. The earliest version of the nursing pin was thought to be, made, was thought to be the Maltese cross worn on the uniforms of the Crusaders, who cared, for the, who cared for and tended to sick and wounded soldiers. The crosses were a symbol of the knights who would provide medical treatment and were large enough to be seen on the battlefield. Sorry. <laughs> 
Centuries later, Florence Nightingale was honored in the 1860s uh, with the Red Cross of St. George for her gallant efforts uh, during the Crimean War. She, in turn, uh, began recognizing her most diligent and exceptional nursing graduates with the Medal of Excellence. Over the years, the medal evolved into a pin, and by the late 19th century, it became the standard of practice to not only award the most distinguished, but all nursing graduates with a pin during a very special ceremony. <laughs> um, the first painting ceremony was held in 1880 at the Nightingale School of Nursing at Bellevue Hospital, New York. Go back down. <laughs> the nursing pin distinguishes the institution from which the nurse received their training. Today's nursing pins are unique to each nursing school and designed to be worn as a symbol of pride and excellence. The, Chang, the Tan Ching Feng Graduate School of Nursing pins are awarded in celebration of students' completion of the pre-licensure year of the Graduate Entry Pathway Program. This is a symbol of welcoming them into the profession of nursing. Welcome. We got one more. Um, the pin representing the Graduate Entry Pathway was designed by student committee from the class of 2007. Inside the shield, the column with entwined snakes symbolize wisdom. Above the shield, the, the, the eagle's wings symbolize protection. The star symbolizes the Commonwealth of Massachusetts as one of the original colonies. The stars also stand for nobility of purpose. The laurel leaves symbolize both peace and triumph. And the words education, research, service, and practice refer to the mission of the Tan Ching Fen Graduate School of Nursing. And if I might also add, <laughs> um, in reflecting on the context of the history of the pin, these pins also represent a little bit more. When nurses, women rather, were denied the ability to learn and practice medicine in the same capacity as their male counterparts, they created their own intricate and complex science, what we know nursing to be today. Nursing today is a culmination of the brilliant minds and passionate hearts. These pins weigh heavy because these pins are only just trinkets that mark the end of one of our educational journeys, but they also represent shards of a broken glass ceiling. As we pay homage to the women before us who suffered through setting the foundation of the institution of nursing, let us also take a moment to see and to thank the women, our glass shatterers, who are in this room today for their contribution um, to the health of humanity and to their continued construction of a new history. Thank you. Thank you, Saranj and Janice. We will now begin the pinning ceremony Students will receive the pin from our dean, Dr. Joan Vitello, and the uh, certificate of graduation from our associate dean for academic affairs, Dr. Jim Finn. So I will begin to mention our amazing GAP students' names, and then uh, they will come forward and receive their pin and also their certificate of graduation. Ama Ejei. Karina Ashka.
Janice Batista. Dominica Boucher. <laughs> Jennifer Bugos. Mali Bonaco. <laughs> Alicia Kov. Rachele De La Cruz. <laughs> Amanda Ford. Victoria Galvin. <laughs> Emma Glossman. Janet Haas. <laughs> Madeline Hayes. Nava Huzenes Hart Paramchadi <laughs> Jenny Conjoin. Ian Lane. <laughs> 
Fennell Leandro. Ann Lee. Olga Akushova. Sonia Marais. Eileen <laughs> Monaco. Emily Nolan. <laughs> Michelle Oliveri. Audrey O'Neill. <laughs> Melanie Ostigi. Colleen Parker. <laughs> Raj Patel. Erica Powell Boysen. <laughs> Anupa Prajapati. Sierra Quadro. <laughs> Sarang Raj. Julian Reed. (laughs) 
Colonel Saliba. Rebecca Smith. Rachel Stroh. Anita Trunt. <laughs> Joseph Tulip. Sophia Webb. <laughs> Monica Wyant. Jamie Yates. <laughs> and last but never the least, <laughs> Robin Young. <laughs> Congratulations, GAP Class of 2022. <laughs> this actually showed the diversity of our students. I was having a conversation with somebody at that time, and uh, this person asked me, "Why? how are you able to turn this amazing student to nurse in, into nurses in one year? And I thought about it. I'm like, hmm. So let's think about this, okay? If I have a student with a degree, any other degree except healthcare. Example, this student is serving in a very high-paced restaurant, serving about 30 tables, being able to manage and <laughs> to the extent that everybody is happy. At the end of the day, this student has something amazing. That is very unique to nursing. And this shows the diversity of our students coming from all various walks of life. So I will say congratulations. And uh, it's been a pleasure to have you as your GAP director. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, I would like to invite Robin Young, student speaker for the GAP class of 2022, to share some thoughts with you. Hello? Okay. 
Good evening, and thank you everyone for joining us tonight. It is an incredible honor to be asked to speak on behalf of the class as we come together to celebrate this remarkable accomplishment. This is a really amazing group of talented individuals that I have been blessed to come to know over this past year. We began as a room full of strangers last August with so many personalities from a variety of backgrounds and from many stages of life, but we all shared one commonality. We wanted to become nurses. I still vividly remember during the first few weeks of GEP, desperately trying to figure out how to obtain a blood pressure and laughing as one of my peers kindly showed me, and I believe Dr. Amoa chimed in, that putting the earpieces of the stethoscope incorrectly and not backwards was a good place to start. <laughs> we were taking care of each other from day one. And here we are now, new nurses, ready to step into the world and provide care Thanks to our faculty, our preceptors, and each other, it is phenomenal how far we have come. As I was thinking about what to say this evening, how to acknowledge all our hard work, I received a message from a friend congratulating me on completing this gap year. She said to me, I know this moment was never a given. This takes hard, hard work. And it is a feeling like no other when you hold that confirmation of success in your very own hands. Those words moved me deeply, and I felt such incredible gratitude, because in that moment she recognized and called attention to just how challenging this past year has been for every one of us. This was work, and it was never a given we would be standing here tonight. She acknowledged the tenacity and dedication we all needed to truly transform ourselves over this year. Yes, this is a group of bright, talented individuals with many past successes but we all had to work harder than we ever imagined to become the nurses we are right now at this moment. We fought for this. An accelerated graduate entry nursing program is not for the faint of heart and takes incredible dedication and devotion to a larger purpose. We all carried the stress and strain differently, but we all experienced it. And we all had to pull from the deepest wells within ourselves to arrive, arrive at this moment here together. And when I look out at all of us, I see a group of faces that embody the strength, determination, and dedication required to become nurses, and it's just breathtakingly beautiful. I could not be more proud to be part of this class. As we move forward on this journey as nurses, I have spent a lot of time thinking about how I become the nurse I want to be in the world. And as I reflected on this question, I remembered a particular shift with a patient I cared for during one of my clinical rotations who is struggling deeply with complex medical illness, a failing fragile body, rapidly changing quality of life, and incredible loneliness and isolation with no family or friends to support him. He was exhausted, overwhelmed, and throughout the morning had been very angry, irritable, frustrated, yelling he wanted to be left alone and refusing any care offered. When a quiet moment and opportunity presented itself, I sat with him. I didn't say anything, we just sat together for a bit. I held his hand, which he surprisingly allowed, and he looked out the window for a while. I was actually readying myself to leave and give him space when he began to speak. And I sat quietly and I listened. I listened to his fears, his past traumas, his regrets, his struggle with substance abuse, his joys, his hopes, and his grief. He expressed that this time in the hospital was incredibly hard as he felt unworthy of receiving care. His shame and guilt was heavy, and the weight of that burden was too much to bear when someone was kind to him. But in this moment we were sharing together, he needed to be seen, as he was someone who had felt unseen for much of his life. There was such strength in his willingness to be vulnerable. He just needed someone to listen to him without sitting in judgment of the story he needed to tell. Our time here together in GEP has taught all of us how to sit alongside our patients as they share their stories. We can provide skilled medical care while also seeing beyond a diagnosis or a disease to the person we are treating. I deeply believe that to become the nurses our patients need, we must slow down and really listen to what is both being said and not being said by our patients. We need to walk into a room with an awareness that our job is to provide individualized care that promotes and protects not just a person's medical health, but their overall well-being as a person a person who's deserving of empathy, dignity, and respect. We can give our patients permission to feel safe in their own skin. 
Our patients will come with stories and histories and traumas we cannot even begin to understand, but we will feel it in how they relate to themselves, to their families, and to us. It is unspoken at times in the room. Yet I know I am surrounded this evening by an incredible cohort of new nurses who see every patient's humanity and write to save compassionate care. One of my favorite authors, Dr. Atul Gawande, says it so beautifully when he writes, we've been wrong about what our job is in medicine. We think our job is to ensure health and survival, but really it is larger than that. It is to enable well-being. Nurses are indeed enablers of well-being, and thanks to our hard work over this past year, we are well equipped for the journey ahead. Again, thank you to all the family, friends, loved ones, faculty and staff who have supported us all endlessly. We are deeply grateful for all of you. And to my GEP peers, thank you for being an incredible group of humans who I have learned so much from. I appreciate all of you. Congratulations to us, we did it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Robin. That was so amazing. You know, that is the essence of nursing, right? It is. Thank you. At this time, I would like to invite uh, Raj Patel to lead the class in the nursing pledge. <clears throat> Dry throat. <clears> throat. Okay. I know I may look like the parent of a GEP student, but I'm actually two GEP students in a 52-year-old body. Uh, again, I just wanted to echo the, the gratitude for, for our incredible faculty and all the people that put all of their energy into to making us who we are. Uh, we all stand on the shoulders of giants, and many of them in this room, and you guys are definitely all my giants. I couldn't have gotten here without you. Um, I'm grateful for, to you all. And uh, I just want to take two seconds to acknowledge uh, Doc Rosemary Taylor, who was with us for the first uh, half of our journey. Uh, she was wonderful. <clears throat> and also, I don't believe, uh, Shelby Shaw and Alyssa Menendez, uh, two Geppers that uh, made it through this journey with us, are not here tonight, but I want to give them a round of applause, please. <clears throat> Okay, so I'm, this is going to be, uh, I, say, I say the uh, phrase and then please repeat it after me. Um, I will try to make this slow so I don't rush through it. <clears throat> hearts on, hands on hearts, however we do it, or, or just, just in earnest. Please repeat, repeat after me. <clears throat> I solemnly pledge myself in the presence of this assembly, to practice my profession of nursing faithfully, I will provide care where care is needed and shape the environment in which, in which care occurs. <laughs> Sorry. So that the promise of caring may be fulfilled. I will center my practice on the welfare of all those in my care. Honoring the fullness of their humanity. I will hold in confidence all personal matters committed to my keeping. I will refrain from any action. And will not knowingly take any action that will do harm. I will maintain and elevate the standards of my profession through reasoned inquiry and faithful scholarship and by embodying the integrity expected of me by my peers and those I serve. Congratulations to us all.
Thank you, Raj. I would like to invite Dean Vitello to the podium uh, to share her closing remarks. Well, first of all, I want to acknowledge Dr. Akwaze Dua. I think we should give him a round of applause. Akwazi um, offered to serve as your interim director, and uh, today he informed me he wants to be the permanent director. <laughs> so I'm really thrilled and want to thank you, Akwazi. Akwazi is also a, an alum of this school. He graduated with his PhD, so we've been able to attract our alums. How great is that? Congratulations. <laughs> I, I just want to invite you all for some light refreshments and some libations, I've been told, um, downstairs in the multi-purpose room. I want to again congratulate all of our 43 GEP learners on welcome to this honored and cherished profession. We are thrilled to have you amongst us, and I know you're going to go out and do great things. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. John Vitello. At this point, uh, whilst we are seated, we will let a student exit uh, the auditorium, and we have the refreshment is in the downstairs. Yeah, yeah, the multi-purpose room. <laughs> yeah.